The Harley Benton Tube 15 is a 235 euro amplifier that gets a lot of great reviews, but the question is, is it any good? So like everyone else, I watch YouTube, I look at gear demos and gear reviews, and a few years ago, I noticed this amplifier. The American equivalent is the mono price. It's the exact same amp, just different branding. And a lot of YouTubers were claiming this thing was amazing. And at 235 euros, I decided why the hell not? I'm gonna give it a shot. It's gonna be a pretty lengthy video, so I've included some timestamps for you so you can jump around to the different sections of this video. If you wanna know more about the Tube 15, I have some affiliate links links in the description box below. So before I started filming, I did some research and looks like this amp is based off the Laney Cub 12R. Some people say that it's based off the Blues Junior, but it looks like the consensus is that this thing is based off of the Laney amplifiers, which explains why it sounds really good. If you know more about it, let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> The Harley Benton Tube 15 is a one channel amp. It is rated at 15 watts, scalable down to one watt. It has three 12 AX7 and two EL84s. The speaker is a Celestion 7080. The controls include gain, volume, tone, bass, middle, treble, and a reverb. The reverb is a spring reverb, which is a tank at the bottom of the cabinet. There is an effects loop. The reverb is foot switchable, and the speaker jack at the back is both eight and 16 ohms, and the amp weighs 11 0.5 kilogram or 25 pounds. Now my amp was a B stock. I've bought a lot of B stock stuff from Toman before and most of it was sound. There wasn't really anything serious with it. So this one came in a few days after ordering it. I plugged it in and there was a rattle. I wasn't too sure what it was. So what I did is I took the amp, looked at all the screws and some of them were kind of loose. So I ended up tightening every single one of them but the rattle was still there. So I poked in at the back and I noticed that some of the tubes, the retainers that keep them in place were loose and they were rubbing against the grill at the back of the amp. So I took that plate off and I looked inside and I was really surprised to find out that it wasn't no name brand tubes that were in there. Uh, the EL84 are Sovtech. There was two TAD or TAD, I'm not too sure how to pronounce that one. And uh, there was one JJ 
I believe, in the V1 position. So I don't know if they all ship with these kind of tubes from Toman or if I was just lucky with this one. My impression is that the previous owner probably ended up changing the tubes and couldn't find out why there was a rattle. And that rattle has to do with the fact that those retainers weren't holding the tubes in place. They were just kind of loose there. So if you play certain frequencies, they were just buzzing against the back of the grill. So that's really the only issue there was with this B-Stock. Aside from that, you know, there's nothing wrong with the amp. <laughs> So what are you getting for 235 euros? You're getting an amp that is loud enough to gig with and has enough options on there for you to play with it at home at whisper quiet levels with the power scaling. There's a real spring reverb, you have the effects loop, the distortion in the amp sounds really good. It's not too fizzy. It doesn't sound too pokey either. The cleans are really good and the amp takes pedals fairly well. It's not the best, so I'm gonna be talking about that in the cons but it does take pedals fairly well. Overall, for 235 euros, this is far better than my Marshall Origin, which is about the same price. I actually think that the Marshall Origin sells for a bit more. I'm gonna write it on the screen here, but there's not that much difference. But in terms of what you can do with this amp at this price range, it kicks ass over a lot of the competition. <laughs> expect with an amp in this price range it's not perfect there's a few flaws and some of these flaws might be enough to sway you away from the amp or it might not bother you at all so I'm just bringing it up just so that you're aware of it I don't know if it's just my amplifier or if it's the whole line that is like this but basically if I use single coils the amp sounds nice and articulate but as soon as I get with higher output humbuckers or a p90 it becomes this muddy mess it seems so dark I have to crank up the treble all the way up and the master tone has to be cranked all the way up and even then I feel like it doesn't cut enough I get the impression that it might be the impedance of that input jack that is too high so it might be like 250k or something like that it sounds fine with single coils but as soon as you get with higher output pickup and humbuckers it just rolls off too much high end and then you have to compensate with the EQ <laughs> The second one is pedals, it's the exact same problem. So with pedals, I feel like certain pedals sound really good in here, they sound as they should, but then with other pedals, it feels like it becomes this muddy, unclear mess that's just very overly compressed and dark. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, two more things about this amp is the scalable power down to one watt. When you use it, it makes your signal even darker. So if you're already pretty dark and with humbuckers and all that, and you scale it down to one watt, it rolls off even more high end. Speaking of playing at low wattage, this thing, if you use the master volume in the lower setting, it's really jumpy and finicky. So, so finding that sweet spot is a bit of a pain so do keep that in mind it's not that big of a deal it's not a deal breaker by any means but I'm just bringing it up so you know that the amp reacts this way <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to be giving you my opinion of the Tube 15. I want you to keep in mind that I bought this amp with my money. This is not sponsored by any means. I'm really giving you my most impartial, objective opinion on it. But I do have my own opinions as to who I think this caters to. So we're going to get into that. <laughs> my verdict on who I think this amp is for. If you're someone who's just starting out and you need a tube amp that's going to cover some ground for you for the next couple years, something where you can gig with it, you can play at home, you can do some home recording, the amp should more than satisfy your needs. You got the real spring reverb in there, you have an effects loop, the distortion that's built in sounds really good, and so do the cleans. If you're a gigging musician and you're looking for an amp and you don't want to compromise on the options that come with the amp, but you need to keep it budget friendly, this is also a great option. If you're someone that has a 100 watt amp and you can't even turn it on without being yelled at because it's too loud and you're looking for something that's budget friendly, you're not looking to replace your current amp, you just want something that does clean the distortion fairly well and that can, you know, if you have to bring it to some gig that's really small and you don't want to haul your Marshall head and cab, then this might be also a great option for you if you're just looking for something that's scalable down to one watt and you can bring it up if you wanna jam with someone and it's not gonna be your main amp, then it's also a great option. <laughs> this video there are plenty more like it right here on screen i'm starting a brand new series all about the tube 15. i'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks i'm going to be showing you what it sounds like with different pedals and different guitars and i'm going to be answering a lot of common questions so if you're interested in that click on one of those videos and i'm going to see you in the next one cheers <laughs>